It's week 17 of the National Football League. And coming up is the lockdown man himself, Jair Alexander. He's one of the last guys you want to target in coverage. It's the Packers and the Vikings. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 25. What better way to start off the afternoon than with some football, huh? It's time to get things started here on the NFL on EA Sports. All right, football fans, settle in because we got bragging rights on the line in this one. Kate Scott, Brock Heward here with you as we get set for a division rematch. Brock, one side seeking the sweep and the other looking for some revenge after how that first showdown went. What do they say about familiarity? Familiarity does what? It, it breeds something, Brock. It breeds uh, con yeah, contempt. It, yeah, it breeds contempt. Yeah. These teams don't like each other. They can fake it. They can say all the right things in the papers. They don't want any bulletin board material. But the fact is, you know your division foes better than anybody, and they know you. And that familiarity does bring a little extra heat into this matchup. Return coming from the six. <laughs> Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. So the Packers offense getting set for their first drive. They'll be led out by the Utah State product and former first rounder back in 2020, Jordan Love. It took Jordan Love a little while for him to get his chance to start in the NFL. He had to watch Aaron Rodgers for a number of years, but guess what? Aaron had to watch Brett and it paid huge dividends. And it sure looks like Jordan Love to start his career is doing the same. He didn't just watch Aaron Rodgers. He worked on his game. He developed his game over three years. And when he got his chance, he sure looked like a young star at the position. And he's brought down for a loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. On second down, Jacobs. We'll have him gain about a handful there. Brought to the ground by Cameron Bynum. Give him five on that play. Now it's going to be third down and six. Kate, I know you can see that smile on my face as we stand next to each other. Sure, I love that run. But I'm thinking about some great running backs. In fact, Corey Dillon, who created a lot of negative grades on my play sheet because I didn't... He's got it inside the 25. They rip off a huge chunk of field as the downs reset. Now, right there, that's what you want to see on your opening drive. Boom! Connect on a big shot, and instantly you set a tone that you're not going to be afraid to be aggressive in this game today. Boy, do I love that. Now they'll hit the line just outside the red zone following that big play. Ready, ready. Running on first here with Jacobs. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Okay, don't think for a second this is time you step off the gas. You can feel this defense, right? They're on their heels. And now's the best chance to go push the envelope and get aggressive. First down, and they go right back to him. And they bring him down at the seven yard line. Minute six on the play, bringing up second and four. That's a run that you'll take the result in the NFL every time. A nice play, a solid game, but it's also a run that you know and you may come back to because if you were that close to breaking off an explosive one, you really break the backs of a defense. And they'll make this stop after a small push to the five. Two yards on the pickup, and that leaves him with third down and three. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal gain, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. Here we go. Here we All go. plays on the table here for third and three. Turning to Jacobs on third. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. A gain of three, and now they're going to be able to plan for first and goal. Okay, you know me, I can't resist. I thought we might have needed the old Gene Steratore index card down there. <laughs> Making a really close measurement to see if he got the first down or not. But in the end, a little right call was made. He got just enough to move the chip. And he's in for the touchdown. The Packers. 
Raptors finish up an excellent opening series. It's a Josh Jacobs touchdown. Well, he couldn't ask for a better start to a game than that. The offense taking it all the way down the field and finishing with six. These opening drives, Kate, are such tone setters. It is why every offense loves to script their first 15 plays, right? Everybody knows what's coming. Allows you during the practice week to get into rhythm, but even better when you're that sharp, that crisp, and you finish off and get the early lead. Carlson good on the extra point. And the Packers will jump out to a 7-0 lead. The Packers about set to kick this one away, and away we go again. Here's Jamal Agnew on the return. The return manages to get just beyond the 30. And here come the Vikings, taking the field for their first drive of the game. Leading them out, the 10th pick of the draft, coming off that national championship in Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. And he wonders, he's about to take his first snap today. Yeah, he took care of the football last week, Kate. That was great, no interceptions. But just the one touchdown. Be curious if he cranks up that aggressive knob today. They've got first down from the 31. Starting the drive with a give to Jones. And he sneaks this through the middle, maybe a gain of two. Now we'll take a moment to check out his numbers on the ground from a week ago. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. From the 32. And the cover just too good there. Didn't find a throw that he was confident in, so just throws it away. Third down coming up. Brings up third down and eight yards to go. Here we go, Let's go. Now McCarthy. Able to find Jones. Jukes one defender. And he'll be out of bounds right along the 40. I'm a big fan of the screen pass. Really, you could run a screen as they just showed on any play. First, second, third down, sometimes even fourth. But it takes great acumen, a great football IQ defensively to have an awareness it's coming, and then more importantly, to stop it. Hunter takes the field on fourth down, and he sends this one flying. And he can't evade the coverage team for much. They stop him before he gets really anything on that return. Officially a 55-yard launch. And the Packers will take over possession. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Ready. Ready. Jacobs gets it to start the drive. And he's going to be brought down up at the 28-yard line. Halfway there on first down. That brings up second and five. It's got to be so demoralizing as a defense when you go up against a running back who just keeps those legs churning like a piston in an engine. And that effort's contagious. This entire offense is getting a boost when he busts those tackles. And they'll bundle this up after a four-yard gain. Ivan Pace able to make the stop. Give him four yards there, and they only need one more now on third down. You know, these are the kind of runs, Kate, that a balanced game plan and a balanced offense is built on. It gets you good yardage, it sets up your play action, and it keeps that defense honest. And his gain is stopped on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. We're a quarter of the way through on this chilly winter afternoon. 7-0 is our score. More from U.S. Bank Stadium after the break. Time for our second quarter. It'll be Packer football to begin. They've got first and ten here, looking to add to their lead. And he'll get this through the midfield stripe and starts pushing into Vikings territory. Well, Brock, they've made it a point to incorporate him into their offense. And...
offense here. He has been awesome in giving them a spot they need when he gets involved. And it's so nice offensively, Kate, when you feel it, when you can run it, when you can throw it, and especially running it like this, going to pay huge dividends as the game goes on. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Kate, it's amazing how fast these guys are on the field and how fast your fortunes can turn. Second and short run, you're feeling good about yourself. But with a negative play, well, now comes a critical third down. Third and just two to go. A give to Jacobs on the inside handoff. And he's dropped just short of the marker, maybe a yard away. That's one of those plays, Kate, as an offense, it just sticks with you a little bit. It bothers you that you just can't convert on a very manageable down and distance. And on the other side, it sure gives you some confidence defensively to get off the field. So fourth down, here comes Daniel Whelan to send it flying for the Packers. Coming off a busy week, five punts in the loss, and he sends this one away. No return on that punt. And the Vikings are going to take over from deep in their own side. Now for the second time this game, we get a look at this Vikings offense. They didn't start the game off like they wanted, Brock. Still searching for that opening first down as they take the field a second time. On play action now, McCarthy. Sideline shot is snagged by Hawkinson. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. A big play, 23 yards to move those chains. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Do that. Turn a short little gain, a short little pass into some yards after catch, and that quarterback will find you again. First and 10, here's McCarthy. That one's incomplete over the middle. Can't cover it much better than that really well-covered Kate on that play. There just simply was not a window for him to sneak that throw in. Let's go. He's got a man left. He's forward, gets a couple of yards. That was Xavier McKinney that time with the tackle. Well, he saw his guys pick up the blitz. Well, he felt them pick it up anyway if he wasn't looking at them. But with their effort on his behalf, I think this QB felt owed to them and the group up front to find somebody to get a completion so that effort up front wasn't in vain. Has the connection to Jones and just gets back to the line of scrimmage. I got to be honest, it hurts a little extra when it comes on third down, but it really doesn't matter what down it is. If a completed pass is stopped at the line of scrimmage offensively, that's a failure. Defensively, that's a success. Ryan Wright on to punt. And some textbook work covering that punt. It is stopped after almost nothing on the return. The Packers and Josh Jacobs about set to go on offense. And he's already scored once this game, something he's made a bit of a habit of this season, as we see he's among the league's best at finding that end zone. They'll get this drive started, first and 10. Man in motion, out of the slot. On the handoff, here's Jacobs. And they love to see him fighting forward, but he only gets him three. I know that may look like a whole lot of nothing burger on the stat sheet, but those are the kind of plays, that inside run, that you see creative play action come off of later in the game. Second down now, seven to go. Ready, ready. Ready. Love from the gun. Trying for the deep ball. Had the window to go deep, but just couldn't make it happen. Now it's third down. Well covered on that play. Really not a large window for him to sneak that throw in. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Here we go. They bring their tight end left. Throwing his love on third. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. See the pass, time up your hit, and char that ball loose. Not a lot of players are hanging on through a well-placed hit like that one. Punt team is on now, and they get this away. And he'll haul in this punt. Fair catch made at the 45-yard line. Yeah. 
So good field position to start with for the Vikings this drive. First and ten. Operating from the gun, it's McCarthy. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. Vikings out of the hurry up. Need everyone back to the line. Another try following the sack. As a man, Justin Jefferson. Along the right sideline, there's space. He does it. Touchdown, Minnesota. The Vikings earn the chance to tie it before halftime. It's a Justin Jefferson touchdown. I love plays like this, Brock. Sometimes you just got to ask your dude, show me what you got, man. Show off those wheels, and he did just that. Yeah, beauty in simplicity, right? Yep. Now, when you run that fly route, you got to win right from the jump. Uh -huh. and you got to protect yourself from the sideline, too. Don't get pushed to the boundary. Give your quarterback room to throw it up, and you can find pay dirt. Record there to tack on the extra points. And the Vikings tie this game 7-7. Ready to send this one away. Has this at the six. And this drive will start inside the 25. The Packers back out on offense. They're running back, headed out once again. And the NFL rushing title within his grasp as we enter the penultimate week. He sits atop the league in yards. They're out and set, first and ten. Shotgun now for Love. Pocket isn't holding up, they're able to drop him. And the big play drives them backwards, second down coming up. Yeah, this is a time where offensively you got to regroup, you got to get in that huddle. You know, and quarterback is the most important leadership position. Everyone's looking at you. And as a QB, after taking a sack like that, Golly, you got to flush it, instill some confidence, and move this ball forward. Taking a deep shot here. And disaster averted. He knocks away the deep ball incomplete. I know a DB in the stat sheet loves to see INT and not PBU. But as soon as he realized a pick was impossible, he does the next best thing and knocks it away. Come on, back. Ready? Hand off here to Jacobs. And he'll get this up to the 18-yard line. The Vikings call a timeout. It'll be their first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. The Packers send out their punting unit. And after that drive went backwards, he's going to send this one forward. Fair catch called for and made a little shy of midfield. We don't get a return out of that punt. And the Vikings are going to take over with their eyes on the end zone. New set of downs for him from the 46. Throwing on first, it's McCarthy. Cut out left. And he's marked down, looks like at the 32-yard line. Minnesota spends its second time out here. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Here's McCarthy, first and 10. Throwing deep for the end zone. And he has the catch, gets both feet in, that's a touchdown. The Vikings take the lead just before halftime. It's a Justin Jefferson touchdown. His second scoring catch of the game. Wow, just fantastic work there. Tiptoeing along the back line. The concentration was there. Great catch for six. Yeah, the concentration and the body control. I don't know how these receivers do it in this day and age. There's no space to work with, yet they have such an awareness to secure it first, to tap dance the line, and go get that touchdown. One after try good by Riker. And the Vikings break that tie and now lead by seven. Ready to send this one away. 
It's Keyshawn Nixon with the return. And he's brought down just inside the 25 on the return. The Packers and Jordan Love set to take over again. And last drive, he reached one of those numbers that everyone looks at as a benchmark after the season ends, Brock. Quite the year that he's put together finding the end zone. The clock reads 24 seconds now as the final drive of this half begins. First down throw, here's Love. Taken in by Luke And they get to him and touch him down. Now we're gonna get an offensive timeout. So that's their first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. I can't tell you how nice it is to have a big, trustworthy tight end in the passing game. Such great size to have, and he forces those defenses to find a way to try to match up when they can't. Oh, he put everything he had into that throw. He's got it! The 10! And he flips the field for them before being taken down. First and goal at the 7-yard line. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. They'll run Jacobs. And he's able to get it to the... Stop. All right, timeout taken by the offense. Five seconds left, and they could take some points into the locker room on this final play of the half. Ball at the two here for second and goal. Jacobs, and he's not going to reach the end. <laughs> Bring him down at the one. So we've reached halftime in Minneapolis with the Vikings out in front at the break. Now we'll send you south to our Orlando studios for the EA Sports Halftime Report with Jonathan Coachman. All right, Kate, we'll get back to you and Brock in a bit. For now, plenty of early action in the 1 o'clock Eastern window to get you caught up on. So let's get to it. We'll get started up at Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. And it's the Broncos who are out in front. Bo Nix has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And they've got the lead in that one over the visiting Atlanta Falcons. The rookie, Jaden Daniels, taking number two overall with two touchdown passes. Lastly, let's get you to MetLife Stadium to see what's happening with the Giants at home in East Rutherford. And you can see there is the visiting Colts who have the lead in that one. Anthony Richardson and Michael Pittman hook it up on a touchdown pass. In that first half, we were treated to a stellar performance by the rookie from Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. Both these teams making their way out of the tunnel and we're ready for the second half. And for the call, we send it back to Kate Scott and the other blonde bomber, Brock Ewart. These two teams making their final adjustments for the second half ahead. It's time to get back at it. For the call, let's rejoin Kate Scott and Brock Ewart. As always, a hat tip to Coach for his hard work during the break as we're happy to welcome you all back for the start of our third quarter. Here's Agnew on the return. They'll have decent field position to begin with here. Rockies tackled just beyond that 30-yard line. Here's the Minnesota offense headed out to start this third quarter. And they really lean on that passing game in the first half, Brock. Let's see if that emphasis continues to start the third. They've got first down from the 31. They'll go play action here. It's McCarthy. Flushed out of the pocket. Now he takes it. Decent yardage picked up here before he slides down to avoid the tackle. You know, Kate, back in the day, we had a slip and slide of practice for moments just like that. Actually practicing how to slide and get out of harm's way. Nice gain on the play. And denied that defense yet another chance to take a shot on him. He's throwing deep to the left side. And that's incomplete. And he's happy to have that one fall compared to, well, the alternative. Looked like it was going to be picked there. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Let's go now. 
From the shotgun, McCarthy. Wow, very quick throw, but they couldn't connect. I think if you look up in phase in the defensive encyclopedia, that is a picture-perfect form of it. He was all over him in coverage, really forcing the incompletion. Minnesota lined up in punt formation. And he finally gets a hold of one here. This is hit far. And little to nothing on that return as the coverage team gets to him. 58 yards on the punt there. And the Packers are going to have a long football field ahead of them on this drive. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Love out of the shotgun. He gets a lot behind one. Deep downfield. And that's going to be knocked away incomplete. And that one firmly denied by the man in coverage. And now it's second down. Any DB prefers a highlight real interception to just forcing an incomplete pass. But as soon as he realized the pick wasn't possible on the play, he gets his hands on it and made sure it wasn't completed. Running right, here's Jacobs. And he's caught after a game of about two. That tackle made by Blake Cashman. He gets a couple, and he'll bring up third down. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet. But if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door a bigger gap in the future. He puts everything behind this one. And he's there to send that one away incomplete. Jaden Reed, the intended target. And they're going to be stuck with a fourth and long. On is the punt team. And away goes the punt. And they'll touch this down just shy of midfield. The Vikings now set to take the field. They were only on the field for three plays their prior series, Brock. Let's see what changes they make to take over here. Play action on first down. Hauled in left side. And they'll manage to contain him after about a six-yard pickup. That was Xavier McKinney that time with the tackle. It's not just imperative that a quarterback knows man or zone. Same thing for a receiver, especially on a drag route. When he sees zone coverage like that, just settle down, find the soft spot, and give your quarterback a chance. Second and four. Caught, nice game left side. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. 35 on the pickup. And now they have a first and goal. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains. There wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. From the red zone now. And he's going to score. Touchdown, Minnesota. The Vikings take a 13-point lead. It's a Justin Jefferson touchdown. His third through the air this game. It's plays like this that make him so well regarded across this league, Brock. Yeah, that's so just a difference-making receiver, King. Yep. You expect him to be the target down here. You did, I did, the defenders did. But what makes him a star is even when people know his number's being called, he still okay. finds a way to deliver. That one splits the uprights. And the Vikings double their lead to 14. What a way. Nixon now to return it. He's brought down at what looks like the 24-yard line. The visitors and this running back headed back out for a new series. And I'm sure they're tired of bringing out the punter, Brock. They're hopefully going to give him some rest this time around and find some points to go after that lead. Off 
offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Ready, ready. Ready. Jacobs running behind center. And he's bundled up quick. This just crosses the 25 to about the 27. Now after that play, we have somebody banged up down there. Injuries never welcome sight so close to the end of the season. They're out to attend to him. Eight yards to go. Let's see how they approach this second down. Here we go. Motion in one of the tight ends. Going run again with Jacobs. And he got it real close, but stopped just about a yard or so shy of that first down. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense, I think, feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run in crossing that first down marker. They stick with Jacobs. And he has it up towards... He's taken down at the 47. Now we're going to get an offensive timeout. That's their first. As that'll leave him with just two to use the rest of the way. Football on that 47-yard line. First down. Hand off, running right, Jacobs. And he powers through the middle for a gain of four. All right, we'll take a brief time out here for an injured player. Never something you want to see this late in the season. They're going to check him out. Second and six coming up here. They run it with Jacobs. And he drives this across midfield and down into enemy territory. Call it four yards, and they're set up with a manageable third and two. You know, okay, these are some of the little hidden plays in a game. It right? doesn't look like a whole lot on the stat sheet, but A, it gets a good yardage. B, it sets up your play action. And C, most importantly, keeps that defense guessing. And they get there to take him down right around the 41. It's a gain of four. And that's good for a Green Bay first down. Play fake. It's love. He's going deep this time. And the defender redirects that deep shot. Nicely done. Incomplete. Target that time, Jaden Reed. So it's second down coming up. Jacobs with it. He's got to gain a six there. Harrison Smith in on the stop. He's been a fixture for them all game, and all signs indicate Brock he's going to remain one in the time we've got left. Yeah, they've leaned on him in certain spots, and he has shouldered the load oh so well. Put together a game that everyone's happy with. Love on third and short. Heaves this one for the back of the end zone. And we all saw it. Flag came out just before that one fell incomplete. They may still get some big yards out of this one. Well, the pass interference might have prevented the touchdown there, but it gives this offense the yards and a great chance to punch it in anyway. Defense, no doubt, still recovering from that interference call, Brock, but they've got to buckle down here. It's first and goal. Jacobs has the Green Bay touchdown. The Packers shave some off the deficit late in the quarter. It's a Josh Jacobs touchdown. Well, next to kickers, some of our most prolific scores in league history have been running backs, Brock, and he now tops them all, most touchdowns in a single season. Yeah, pretty incredible, Kate. You've got to do it with your legs. You've got to do it with your hands. It's why, well, when you're a little kid, right, and you're playing on the school ground, you, you figure it out pretty quickly. That dude's elite. That guy can run and score. He's a difference maker, and this guy certainly is. Carlson's extra point is good. And the Packers chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Here's Agnew on the return. 
He stopped on the return of the 27. The Vikings and their QB, J.J. McCarthy, returning to the field on offense. And as we're reminded of some of the highlights of this game, his touchdowns ranking quite high among them. We're going to see three of them here, and if you're scoring like that, Brock, it normally means you've had a pretty darn good game. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Jones trying the left side. And they bring him down, but there's a flag on the field. Holding offense. So the defense decides to decline the penalty. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. A touchdown aside in that frame as we run out of time in the third quarter. It's Vikings ball working to carry this lead through to the end. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. And they send a man in motion. Second down carry for Jones. And he's dropped just short of the marker, maybe a yard away. Short yardage situation here, it's third and two. Jones wants more. And the defense was ready, they got him at the line. Ground game stopped again. That leaves them with a fourth and short. You know, I'm not sure what else could have been done there, Kate. Just the right call defensively to come up with a third and short stop. The Vikings getting their punt team out. Ryan Wright's the one to send it away. And he sends this away. Definitely his best kick of the game thus far. Fields this at the 19. And he gets his guys a few yards before they bring him down on the return. And that punt gets up to 59 yards. And they're going to take over possession. Ready, They'll get this drive started. First and 10. Down. Now a run with Jacobs. And he found some running room for a nice game. Call it nine yards. Looks like a first for a moment. It's second and one. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, you will take it in the NFL. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. Here's a give to Jacobs. And his short gain gets them a new set of downs. You know what I like about a second and short run play, Kate? Yeah, I like getting a first down, but you know what I like even more? That's going to set up a play-action pass in a similar down and distance, and that defense is going to have to key on the run. And he's able to drive up past the 40. Even five on that carry, bringing up second and five. You gain that kind of yardage in the run game, and you're going to gain the trust of your offensive coordinator. Plays like that, runs like that, set the table for everything else in the playbook. Here we go. Takes the handoff, now Love. He lets one fly, deep downfield! In disaster averted, he knocks away the deep ball, incomplete. That one vehemently swatted away. And it'll be third and five coming up. Looking to throw. He's looking deep once again. He's got it inside the 20. Now timeout taken by Green Bay. That's it second. We'll see how judicious they choose to be with that final timeout. Now they'll hit the line just outside the red zone following that big play. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? On first and ten, here's Love. 
That's knocked away by a defender, incomplete. Well, Kate, that wasn't a fast enough break for the interception, but it was good enough and a good enough break to break on the ball, get a finger on it, and foresee incompletion. Has it to his back. Here's Josh Jacobs. And he's brought down inside the 10. At That's a gain of 13, and it sets him up with first and goal. To this day, I can still see the faces of the big guys in the huddle. When you call a screen like that, Instead of them just getting knocked backwards, they get to be salesmen. They get to push those linemen downfield and then tee off and go hit somebody like they did right there. That finds Jacobs complete. He's touched down behind the line as this one goes the wrong way. Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. Leading 10 yards now as they line up at second and goal. Here's Jacobs. And it's barely anything on that run, and we've reached the two-minute warning. They've held him out twice. Here we go, third and goal. They'll keep it on the ground. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. We take a break from his regularly scheduled program in a pass coverage duties to see him adding a little contribution in the run support. And his teammates, you can just see the body language. A little nod, a little grin. They'll welcome the reinforcements every time. Three plays haven't gotten it done. Now a fourth to try to reach that end zone. They'll run for it, Jacobs. And he only gets this one down to the nine. He can't find the end zone. They stop him, and they'll still trail as they turn it over on downs. This running back has had himself a day, but not on that play. Finally, a little bit of catharsis for everyone on that defense to keep him from the first and get a turnover, a much-needed turnover, on downs. Starting the drive with a give to Jones. And he's short of the first after a mild game. Give him around six. That's going to make it second and four. second and four. Timeout taken by the Packers, their third and final one. That's all they had, so the offense free to start running the clock down now. Lining up to take an E on second down. With the win in hand, they'll take the knee, let this clock run out. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot, and now you can enjoy the victory. Third down, here's Jones. And he hits a wall at the line and goes nowhere. So they are indeed kings in the north as the Vikings win it at home. And they take not just a victory, but some serious year-long bragging rights home with them after this one as they finish off the sweep of their division rivals. So for Brock Heward, our incredible crew, everybody here at EA Sports, I'm Kate Scott signing off. We'll see you next time. The Vikings emerge as winners as we bid you farewell from Minneapolis.